Hello there, Sharks. My name is Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com. Here today going over a 5100 hand from Poker After Dark. You can watch all of the Poker After Dark episodes at Poker Go. They have a gigantic library of educational poker content. And if you like watching live poker, well, Poker Go is designed specifically for you. Here today, we have a hand where Matt Berkey, content creator, coach, et cetera, et cetera. He raises it up, falls around to Jake Daniels in the big blind. I did not know Jake before I played with him on Poker After Dark. You can go and watch that episode on Poker Go. And he seems like he'd be nice enough, but he gets in there and battles as hard as he possibly could. He raises, he re-raises, he bluffs. He stacked me whenever he flopped a backdoor flush draw. Um, so, you know, he gets in there and he battles hard. So he decides to three bet it up with Queen Jack offsuit. Notice Matt Burke, he's playing a little bit shallow here with 80 big blinds. Um, but I think if you're going to re-raise this hand, you just want to go bigger, like 1,200. The problem is when you make it 900, Berkey's going to call or re-raise with like almost everything. Unless he happened to be playing one of the absolute worst hands in his range, he's just going to call. And do you really want your opponent calling in position with whatever they have whenever you have a hand like queen high. And the answer is just no. So you'd rather re-raise to about 1,200 in this scenario. I actually have some cash game tips for you. They're available completely for free. It's a PDF you can download. Check it out at pokercoaching.com slash cash tips. That includes 41 of my best tips if you are going to play cash games. So make sure you check that out. It's completely free. All right. In this scenario, Matt Berkey's obviously going to continue. Flop comes jack nine two. All hearts. This is a spot where you want to ask yourself, do I actually have any flushes? And I have to imagine Jake does re-raise the best flushes, right? Like ace, ace X of hearts, he's going to re-raise sometimes. Um, King, queen of hearts, stuff like that. So he certainly does have some flushes that can bet. And also he doesn't really want to let it check through because then if it does go check, check, and Berkey has like a random flush draw, like pocket sevens with a seven of hearts, and he gets a heart, he wins, right? So this is a spot where I think you do want to bet... He goes 600, and I think the small bet is fine. Uh, maybe you want to go a little bit larger, but I, I think this is fine. Matt Berkey calls, as he's going to do with a whole lot of hands. It is worth noting, when you bet small in this scenario, you should expect to get called by a whole lot of hands. The problem with betting big, like 2,000 in this scenario, as I know a lot of people want to do because they're afraid of getting outdrawn, is that you know while you're not going to get outdrawn as often because your opponents are going to fold out their weak draws, they're also never going to fold their good hands that you're actually in bad shape against. And realize here, Matt Berkey does have a lot of good hands in his range, like ace-x of hearts, king-x of hearts, ace-jack, king-jack, right? He has a lot of very good hands, so you have to be a little bit cautious in this spot. Jake does bet small and gets called, turns a seven, and, eh, you know, it can go either way again. As you think Berkey's going to bluff you out of this pot less and less often with, like, queen of hearts ten, you should be very inclined to go for a value bet, but... In general, when you have a marginal made hand out of position, even when you do have a lot of flushes in your range, you have to be kind of cautious because you could just be running into it here. I highly doubt Berkey's going to fold out the ace-jack or the king-jack ever. I highly doubt he's going to call down with a hand like 10-9 of diamonds ever. So this is a spot where you may be able to get some value on the turn by betting, but eh, he, the problem is, is whenever the pot does get much bigger than this, you're usually in bad shape. So I think the play here is to check, but if you wanted to value bet, it's probably fine. He does go for a small bet. I do like a small bet if you are going to bet, because that, again, lets your opponent stick around with some pretty marginal hands that you're in fine shape against. This is another good example of a spot where you don't want to go big, because if you go big, then you're mostly going to be in bad shape when you get called. Berkey calls, rivers the five of spades, and, well, now we have to figure out what to do. I want you to take a second and think about this spot. From Jake Daniels' point of view, you are thought to be loose and splashy and aggressive. Your opponents are aware of this. If your opponents are aware of this, what would you do in this spot? Would you check, looking to check fold to a reasonable bet? Check, looking to check call a reasonable bet? Would you bet medium, like 2,000? Or would you put Berkey all in for a little bit more than the size of the pot? Take a second to think about what you would do, and then write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, this is a spot where I think, unless you think Berkey is going to be an extreme calling station, this is a pretty nice spot to check. 
and then probably call it off if Berkey bets. And the reason you want to check and then call it off is when you check, you are going to induce Berkey to bluff with random ace of hearts X and king of hearts X. Like imagine he has ace 10 or king 10 or queen 10, right? These are all hands that he certainly could have that if he's sitting there on the river with ace high or king high or queen high, he may decide to go for a bluff. And you know, Berkey gets in there and battles. He's not a weak tight knit, so he will run some bluffs, right? So I think you want to do everything in your power to get those hands to bluff you. If you make any bet here on the river, while you may get called by a few bluff catchers like Jack-10, Ace-10, I'm not, not Jack-10, not Ace-10, Jack-10, Pocket-10s, Ace-9, 10-9, there just aren't that many of those, and those may find a fold anyway. I do get the idea that Jake is in there battling, he's very loose and aggressive, and that will result in him getting called more than a more weak, tight, straightforward player. But this is a spot where I think you just have a pretty easy check and then call. He goes for a bet, though, and Berkey goes all in for a little bit more. What do you do in this spot? $2,000 more. Do you call it off? It's just a fold. It's just a fold. I think Jake folded. I don't know if he actually folded in the game or not. You know what we have? We have a, a video clip lined up. Well, I'll show you right after this where I actually reviewed this in the PokerGo studio, so make sure you stay for that. Um, Matt Berkey had that King 8 of Hearts. How do you feel about this play? Well, I think it's perfect. Matt Berkey played this hand very well. He raised it on the button, A-OK. -okay. Called a small three bet, A-OK, -okay, because he's getting good odds. On the flop, facing a small bet. This is where a lot of people go horribly wrong. Matt Berkey was aware. He was playing kind of shallow stacked. If Jake just bets the flop, bets the turn, jams the river, he's all in. So he doesn't need to raise to build a pot. And he's only live to get outdrawn against exactly the Ace of Hearts and another card, right? So you're not going to get outdrawn all that often. So this is a scenario where you want to do everything you can to keep your opponent in the pot, especially if they are in the process of building the pot for you, like Jake is doing. So easy call, even against a small bet. By calling here, you protect your calling range with the King Eight of Hearts. And this makes you way more difficult to play against than if you just always raise your good hands. A lot of people screw this up. Please don't screw this spot up. Make sure you check out the Cash Tips PDF. We discuss this type of thing at pokercoaching.com slash cash tips. So very, very good call on the flop by Matt Berkey. Also, if he thinks Jake does a lot of bluffing, you really want to keep him in. Jake bets small on the turn. It's kind of annoying when he goes small on the turn because you may not be able to get it all in on the river, but still, just got a call. Raising has no merit. River's a five. Jake bets. Now you put him in and you go from there. So that's my analysis today of this hand. Let's actually take a look at my analysis when I was in the Poker Go studio commentating on this. Let's -a go. Before the break, Matt Berkey flopped a flush and won a monster pot. For more on that hand, let's send it down to Jonathan Little. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Little of PokerCoaching.com and let's analyze this interesting spot. When you flop an effective nut hand like Matt Berkey's King High Flush and you're playing against a loose, aggressive opponent, you should be happy to just call, forcing them to stay in the pot with a wide range of hands that you crush. Matt did exactly this against Jake, allowing Matt to collect a flop, turn, and river bet. While you will occasionally get outdrawn, strengthening your flop calling range by including some effective nut hands will go a long way to making you much more difficult to play against. How would you like to play with me on Poker After Dark? Well, now is your chance. I'm giving away one $5,000 buy-in seat to play with me next season. Head over to pokercoaching.com slash pokerafterdark to enter the giveaway. All right, that's me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a quick favor. Click like, click subscribe, click all the buttons down there below. I would appreciate it. Good luck in your games. Have a fantastic week, and I'll talk to you next time. How do you like free stuff? Yeah? Well, good, because I have a free membership to my site, pokercoaching.com, for you. Click. Get out of the way, hat. Click right up there to get it. And while you're at it, go ahead and click the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.